Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2467. Today we're celebrating a new and upcoming event for RM Sotheby's, their Miami auctions, Moto Miami. It's an event that takes place February 29th through March 2nd at the historic Biltmore Hotel in stunning Coral Gables, Florida. To learn more, go to rmsotheby's.com. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in, well, I'm in a unique place, Auburn. Indiana in a storage facility full of a lot of cool cars with a very special returning guest by the name of Thatcher Keese. Thatcher, welcome back to Cars. Yeah. Do you have any gear and are you ready to release the clutch? I'm ready to go, Mark. Let's do it. Well, I know where we are today is very, very cold, but all the beautiful cars that you're surrounded with kind of warm you up a little bit. You're down there in the RM Sotheby's kind of a holding facility, if you will. Tell me a little bit about where you are. Yeah, we're in uh, Auburn, Indiana, where we have a storage facility that we use for kind of the transit hub for cars going to, from, and anywhere in between auctions. So uh, every once in a while, every couple months, they come down here and do an inventory of what we have, photograph some stuff, and get it sent down the road. Very cool. Well, it's nice and warm to be around the cars, but outside that door there, it's kind of cold today. What's the temperature in Auburn today? Well, the, the, the actual temperature is about 8 degrees Fahrenheit, and the wind chill is around negative 20, so uh, it's a cold day out there. Yeah, well, uh, fire up a car to warm us up. Maybe that's a bad idea inside of a building. Forget that. But uh, <laughs> we'll have some fun talking about cars, and more importantly, talking about an upcoming event in beautiful Miami, where it's not going to be minus 20. It's going to be much more comfortable. Let me introduce you here first, though. And for anybody that missed my talk with Thatcher back in in July of 2023. You can go back and find him on the Cars Yeah website. We talked a lot more about him and his career during that event, uh, but today we're going to be talking about this new event. So let me introduce you properly here. Thatcher Keast is the consignment department manager and auction coordinator at RM Sotheby's, where he oversees consignments and the logistics of making an auction come to life. And once in a while, he finds himself in a warehouse in a cold part of the country. He's going to be a lot warmer, though, coming up next month. He began working in the automotive industry at just 14 years old when he started his own automotive detailing business, much like I did at 14. We have something in common there. He soon found a mentor in a local car collector and became responsible for maintaining that person's collection of automobiles, which included Shelby's and Porsche's, Brass Aero, Rolls Royce's, and many others. In 2022, Thatcher attended the Worldwide College of Auctioneers, where he gained the skills needed to sell cars that are crossing the block at auctions. He's a member of several enthusiast clubs, including the BMW Car Club of America, Mercedes-Benz Club of America, and the Antique Automobile Club of America. And he's a licensed auctioneer, and a great part of the team at RM Sotheby's. We'll be back in just a moment, but a word from our sponsors, so please give them a little love. We're going to warm up here and talk about cars. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? Then let me introduce you to Capitalize Your Finances. It's an online course designed to empower you with the knowledge and tools for mastering your money. This course will help you lay out the ins and outs of budgeting, the importance of emergency funds, investing strategies, and how to plan for a secure retirement. All this presented by financial planner Chris Paniotu. Chris has developed this course to help you effectively navigate your world of finance, with confidence. Stop stressing about money and start taking control. Enroll in Capitalize Your Finance online course today and pave your way to financial success. To learn more, go to capitalizepodcast.com slash courses or better yet, go to the Cars yeah website show notes page for today's show and click on the link under Capitalize Your Finances. You'll be glad you did. Do it today. Hey, guess what? Some of you regular listeners will remember back in 2019, I created uh, 10, 11 shows called Cars Yeah TV, where I went to some fabulous locations of past Cars Yeah guests, and we did a TV show about it. Well, 
they're up on the Cars Yeah YouTube channel. So go check it out at YouTube. Just type in Cars Yeah, and the shows will be there for you to enjoy. I hope you have fun watching. So listeners, you heard in my in my intro that we're going to be talking today about a very new event. It's new in Miami, and it's also new for Arm Sotheby's. It's an event called Amoda Miami, and I'm going to be talking in depth in just a few days with Tess Craves, a colleague of Thatcher, and we're going to get more in depth into Moto Miami. But today we have Thatcher to talk about the Arm Sotheby's Miami auction. So let's start with when the auction is going to be, Thatcher, and where is it going to be? Because you guys have picked a very cool spot. Yeah, we have it in one of the historic landmarks in all of Florida. It is at the Biltmore Hotel. It is a wonderful estate with a large rolling golf course, a beautiful hotel, beautiful restaurants. It's just it's just kind of quintessential Miami, if you will. Yeah, it's in Coral Gables, part of uh, Miami, which is a very uh, lush, beautiful place. And that hotel, it's a bit like the um, the Breakers Resort where the uh, Cavallino event is held. It's a historic place, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a historic landmark there in Florida. And it's one of those buildings that you can see it from miles away because it's so tall and it just has a presence. It's taller than anything around it. It sits in a residential neighborhood. It is a beautiful place to spend a weekend. Yes, sounds pretty good during this cold day that we're sharing together here. I can't wait. And this event's going to take place February 29th through March 2nd. And Arm Sotheby's, you have two full days of auctions during that that event period, right? That's correct, yeah. So our auction is a two-day auction. It's going to be on the 1st and 2nd. Each day you'll see approximately 60 cars go across the block. Uh, it's a really interesting setup of how we're doing the auction. It's a bit different than your traditional style. All the cars will be displayed outside on the golf course in a concourse style display. So you'll have the benefit of the warm sunshine, being outside, looking at the cars, and then you'll go the on inside to the built inside the Biltmore, and we'll have the auction held in a ballroom with all the cars driving across the Motor Miami concourse stage just outside. So a pretty cool different setup for your non-traditional auction. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. I, I love the concept. Uh, much more, I'll say relaxed in a way, especially when you can venture inside and out. And of course, Miami is beautiful in February, unlike most of the rest of the country, a little icy. And the mode of Miami, as I mentioned, your colleague Tess is going to be on the show in a few days and tell us a lot more about all the things that are surrounding this. So it's a lot more than just a, I say just, I should say it a different way. It's a lot more than the auction by itself. It's surrounded by all these different events and things. But what I have you here for today is to talk about some of the cars. And I want to start by talking about a couple special Bugattis that you have for sale. Yeah. Well, to start, Mark, the the whole theme of the auction is kind of to bring, we call them young timers. So up and coming cars, cars that aren't, aren't necessarily old, but up and coming. A lot of the cars in the auction have value beyond their years. So what I mean by that is the two Bugattis that you brought up. So first one being the 2018 Chiron. That is one of the most technologically advanced and incredible hypercars that has ever been created. Anytime that one of them comes to market, it's usually a feeding frenzy to add this to your collection because you just you can't go to Bugatti and buy one. So they're, they're very sought after and desirable. The other one being its bit older sister, if you will, the Veyron. And when that car came out, you know, it, it was a mechanical, I guess the best word to describe it would be a mechanical and visionary of sorts. You know, that, that car kind of helped start what we know as the modern hypercar. You know, it was just, it was groundbreaking, literally. It made, it makes so much downforce, you, it could crack the ground underneath of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, those two cars, when they're sitting next to each other, you just, you can't help yourself but stop and stare at them. They're, they're just stunning. Oh, absolutely. The Chiron is a 2018 and the Veyron is a 2010. And you look at those two, two cars side by side and you really see the evolution, but that wonderful big sweeping C, I call it, on the side of the car is present on yeah. both of those vehicles. The Veyron has that chrome 
finish on part of it. And is it dark blue or black? It's on the back. It's, it's dark blue. Dark so blue, it, yeah. the, the, the title of the Veyron is the, a Veyron EB 16.4 Grand Sport Sang Blue. Mm. So the, the Sang Blue is referring to the dark blue color of it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, those are... <laughs> Yeah, just I remember those cars came out. You just kind of were blown away about everything. And one of the, the couple of things I remembered is you have to have special tires because of the speeds that those cars got to. But also, I think and I don't remember the exact numbers, but if you got to speed, you would empty that fuel tank in something like five or six minutes. It was absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, everybody's got to have one of those in the garage. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's just the cost of going fast. <laughs> well, yes, there is a cost to go fast. Let's go back in time a little bit because another car that is arguably one of the best cars ever is the Duesenberg and the Model J yes. that you guys have. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, I, I just said that, you know, we were going to have a lot of young timer stuff and up and coming things. But we also uh, decided to include a group of cars that kind of resembles the Art Deco style of Miami. So, you know, very, very 30s and 40s styling. And we've got a few of them in the sale. The the top one, the best one, of course, being the uh, Model J Duesenberg, the uh, Sweet Panel by LeBaron. It's one of the most timeless, awarded, sought after, visually stunning cars ever created. I mean, there's no two Duesenbergs alike. So in order to get one that has a incredible history and story is all that's kind of what makes the Duesenberg so special. Each one has its own story. Um, the one that we have, we have an estimate on the car of 2.6 to $2.8 million. So it's a very significant Duesenberg in the Duesenberg world. Um, you know, being an open car, convertible, dual cow it's it doesn't get any more American classic than that. Oh, absolutely. I remember watching a short video with Jay Leno and they said, what's the best car ever made? And he said the Duesenberg, and he talked about it as a car that from the 30s or late 20s that you could drive on the freeway today with ease yep. versus a lot of old cars you wouldn't want to get on the freeway today because that, that Camry or Honda next to you would, would blow your doors off. But the Duesenberg, yeah, the quintessential older collectible car. And there's a couple others in this category. I know one that pulls on your heartstrings, the Packard Dietrich. Yeah, it really does. It's the 32 Packard Deluxe 8 Individual Custom Convertible Victoria by Dietrich. And in the Packard world, anything that has Dietrich as the last word of the sentence of the title of the name. <laughs> yep. Uh, the, the Dietrich is, it's the, the almighty of Packards. They have such a aura and presence about them. They're so commanding. The, the, the hood, like, I mean, the hood is at least eight feet long. <laughs> yeah. At least. You know, it goes all the way back to the split V windshield. The the convertible tops on them just they they fit so well. They give the car such such a presence. Like whether it's in a garage or on a show field, it draws your attention. And it's not that the cars are, you know, uber flashy or flamboyant. They just command your attention. They're they're stunning automobiles. Again, another American classic, just top of the line. And the, the Victoria by Dietrich, it does not get any better. Absolutely. When my son, I started taking him to Pebble Beach Concour when he was about eight years old. He's 30 now. Wow, how did that time go by? And I remember walking the field and showing him a Duesenberg, a Packard. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second, a Mercedes 540. And he looked at me and he said, people actually drove these? Oh, yeah. around and i said yeah and he goes my goodness this is they look like magic i think he called it a magic carpet machine or something like that <laughs> yeah just uh amazing and, and i want to talk about another one the mercedes 540 the sindelfingen sindelfingen if i can say that my german is very poor uh 39 another one that wouldn't these look great side by side in one person's garage wow oh yeah like if you want to have a pre-war classic grouping of cars like these are the three that you need i don't say need i say need i don't say one if you want to have a great group of <laughs> pre-war classics this is it this five this 540k is a really cool car it's it's largely original so it retains most of its original components which is a very rare thing from a car from the 30s um it's it's uh numbers matching it's got the original stampings what else about this 540k this oh uh, another significant thing about this car is that it previously won best of show at Pebble Beach. Whoa. So not so not only are you buying a great 540K, you're buying one of the best, well, judged 
five forty k as the best to yeah. exist. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, as if that isn't enough. Now, a lot of times people will listen and say, well, yeah, this is all great, Mark and Thatcher, but you know, I'm not in that league of one, two, three, four million dollar type cars. What have you got for me? And I noticed that being a BMW fan, I've got an E46 M3 I bought new. I've had two of those. I've had two E36 M3s. All of a sudden, my old M3s are collectible. You've got a nice handful of M3s. Yeah, we have pretty well the best grouping or coin. Like, what's what's four together? Not a quad. A, a, a quad. <laughs> oh, yeah, a quad of M3s. We've got the the 90, 1990 M3 Sport Evo. We've got the 89 M3 Convertible. We've got the 87, which is one of the very first years for the M3 Coupes. And we have an 88 M3 Evo. Uh, if you look at the markets for M3s, about uh, let's say like anywhere from six to eight years ago, you could pick them up for a really, really good one for sixty to seventy grand, and yeah. now they're one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars for a good one. I know, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I know. If you just told me, actually, you guys, you guys do tell us. You talk about this show. These are up and comers. These are many of these cars will do nothing but go up if you take care of them. Of course, that's not promised, but. You know what? I think they're going to because that generation, your generation, is now very interested in collecting cars. You're making a good living and you can buy cars. And here's a handful of some of the best. So, wow, you've got some really nice stuff there. And a couple Porsches, which, of course, are my favorite, Mark. You've got the the quintessential 911 Speedster, the 94 Speedster that came back. Another car that I should have bought when they were you know, 50, 60 grand. Yep. Oh my goodness. And a 61 VW micro bus. Now this is one of those vehicles that I still look at these cars and go, how can they sell for what they sell for? Because I remember when I was a kid, parents of mine having them, taking me to school in these things, but you know, everything becomes collectible at some point, right? Well, everything becomes collectible and who doesn't love a micro bus? I, I mean, they're just iconic. They're the epitome of you look at it and you go, that's a cute car. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's fun. You don't, nobody, nobody's ever looked at a micro bus and been sad. <laughs> well, and speaking of, I guess I'll call it cute. You tell me what you think. A 69 Fiat 850 Spaghetta by Michelotti. What on earth is this thing? Oh, that's your classic Southern Florida, Southern California beach car. Go to the or boat car. Yacht, yacht tender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yacht little, tender. If you need to go to the marina to pick up some supplies from your mega yacht, this is what you want to be seen in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it's very unique, very different. And it just kind of, sh- well, it does show the diversity of the different kinds of cars you're going to see at this event. Now, there was a one that is even more unique. And I'll tell you, I live in a community where there's a young woman. I'll call her a girl, but she's you know kind of on the edge of womanhood. And she makes be- baked breads and she goes on our Facebook page and says, hey, I'll have breads this Sunday. Come over and pre-order. And she makes these wonderful loaves of bread and things. I looked at your 1933 Twin Coach Helms Bakery delivery truck. And I sent her a picture of this. I said, this is what you need to drive around our neighborhood and deliver your bread. And uh, she goes, well, I need to sell a few more loaves before I can buy that. But that's pretty cool. What on earth? Where does one find one of these? Well, that's the thing. You don't. (laughs) <laughs> they are so few, far in between the Helms delivery trucks. Uh, they're early 30s. They're literally a rectangle with wheels. <laughs> they're, they're again, they're cute. They were used in service. They were actually delivery, like they were, you know, when your milkman used to deliver milk to your front door. So right. the Helms guy would bring bread to your door. Yeah, yeah. You hey. know, and, and <laughs> the ones that survive, they are worth a premium. They're They're great. They're functional. They're... They get your attention and they, again, like the microbus, they just make you smile. They really do. The other thing I want to remind people is there are some cars that are without reserve. Uh, One of them is a 1970 Toyota FJ40 Land Cruiser, which looks like a beautiful vehicle to have that I think will sell for a reasonable price, but you'll get something that's fun and enjoyable and drivable without fear. Um, And there's a couple others that you have no reserve. So there's a lot available here. I'll put links to the website page where you can uh, go and check out all the cars that they have on display. So you've got a lot of fun things here. And I want to ask you a couple questions that I'm going to twist up my usual questions and get a little bit of Thatcherization. I just made that word up. I think you know what I mean. (laughs) Okay. Well, one of the things I always ask is a special vehicle story. So we're going to play a game here, Thatcher. Any car that you guys are offering, you can have. 
I'll buy it for you. I'll bid. I'll get a bidder's paddle and say, yep, just deliver that to Thatcher. So if you had to pick one just today, I have a feeling your choice might switch tomorrow because that's the way us car guys are. <laughs> yep. Which car can I buy you, let's say, on the first day of the auction? Well, if I'm using your money, Mark, I'm going to have you buy me the 63 300 SL Roadster in triple black. Ooh, you surprised me. Yeah. I, Why that car? Well, I've always had an affinity for 300 SL Roadsters. I've I've been lucky and fortunate enough to drive several of them being in the business that I am in. Every time I have, they do not disappoint. You know, they're they're eligible for loads of rallies and tours. They're very practical. You know, they're a fuel-injected car. They're reliable, and they're just comfortable. I fit in them. I'm a tall guy, and especially in triple black, black wheels, black interior, black paint. Oh, my goodness. It's just it's kind of sinister looking. I have a thing for sinister looking cars, <laughs> and this would, this would be the one. This is going to cost me a couple a couple million yeah, bucks. Yeah, it's going to cost you a couple million bucks. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, hey, for you, anything, my friend. So let's go to day two. Why don't I get you two cars? If I'm going to buy you a second car on day two of this two-day auction, what's your second choice? Well, day two, I'll save you a little bit of money. Oh, it's gee, under a million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can buy me another triple black car. So I have the Duo, the 1990 BMW M3 Sport Evo. Oh, the Evo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the Evo. I, I grew up I grew up loving the E30s. I always liked the body style. I liked the four headlights. I liked the small kidney grills. And when the M3 came out, man, it had a lot of performance for that for that time period. Oh yeah. Um and you know, if you have a triple back 300 SL Roadster, that's gonna be my Concorde rally car. And then my M3 Evo that you're buying me is going to be my go out for dinner and have a fun spirit to drive afterwards. Well, there you go. Those cars were so successful as race cars as well. And that oh, yeah. one being the, talk a little bit about what Evo means, because I remember when those came out and it was one of these specialty versions of the M3. Yeah, well, there's the Sport Evo and they also had an Evo 2, which was an even further iteration of the regular Evo. Um, the Evo had a little bit different engine specifications. Um, I believe it had a bit different gearing in the rear end to make it a little bit sportier. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a little a little bit different aero features on the front. The front splitter was different. It was just small, subtle touches that separated it from the standard M3. And to go even farther, there's also the, we don't have one in this auction, but just another favorite M3 of mine is the Johnny Sakato edition. Oh, yeah. He was a... He was a factory team driver for BMW in the late 80s, early 90s, and they made his Johnny Scotto edition M3. And that one, that one had a little bit more performance, but it had different interiors on them. You know, and they had some stylized. They did the, you know, the famous M Technic interiors with the the three stripes down the seat. It was a little bit more race car for the street. And I've always wanted to have one of those. Yeah, nice. You know, last time we were on the show, we talked a little bit about books, and I love sharing books. You talked about A Shoe Dog yeah. uh, by Phil Knight. Is there, perhaps, since you do so much traveling, you've got a little time on aircraft, other than uh, reviewing cars and learning about cars, is there another book you might share with us today? Uh, gosh, to be honest with you, Mark, I haven't spent much time um, <laughs> in a library since we talked. So <laughs> I understand. Well, you're having to learn so much about so many cars, but no doubt your mo- your uh, knowledge has grown and grown and grown. So I-, I think there's just a wonderful selection of cars this time. But more importantly, I'd love to get a little bit of feedback before I have tests on the show in a few days of your interpretation of what this new Moto, Mo, I want to call it Moto, but it's Moda Miami event. How you would explain this to somebody? Yeah, Moda, Moda Miami is going to be a innovative new style of Concor. It's uh, going to be a lifestyle event with many, many opportunities to participate. We've got some great dinners planned, some evening activities, Carbone, uh, the famous restaurant, um, in Miami, we'll be doing a special catered dinner. Uh, we've got the Supercar 100 Club coming to the Concours on Sunday. Ted can give you a lot more detail and information on that, but it's going to be a luxury lifestyle event. So it's not just going to be solely focused around cars. There's going to be other categories of luxury markets represented from um, Sotheby's Marketplace, where you can come to the Biltmore Lobby that they're going to transform into a, basically a Sotheby's Gallery, where you can Pick up a a handbag, some watches, uh, jewelry, all all sorts of things, and experience some fine dining along with some beautiful cars. 
Well, the great thing about this is you can bring a partner of yours that maybe isn't as fanatic about cars as you may be, and they'll have a good time too. And that's yes, what's absolutely. Yeah, that's what's nice about some of these kinds of events that are in venues like this. I mean, what's not to like about the Biltmore? Holy cow. I mean, everything about it is going to be absolutely spectacular. So what a great time of year to uh, don a cool shirt and linen slacks and head down to Miami and uh, get out of the cold. I think that sounds like fun. Well, in addition to this event, we just got through with the wonderful Arizona auctions. You have some other events coming up this year. Uh, Maybe we can touch very briefly on them. Paris is one you also just had. You guys started the year strong. Let's look at March, Dubai. What's going to happen in Dubai? Yeah, this is our first auction, first venture into the Middle Eastern market. Um, Dubai is going to be our first auction there. We're all very, very excited to see what wonderful Dubai has to offer for us as well as what we can bring to them. Uh, Just last year, we opened up uh, an office there in Dubai for RM Sotheby's so we can have kind of have some boots on the ground in that area. Um, And it's going to be an exciting event. Lots of super hyper modern cars that are seldomly seen. That's going to be I'm I'm hoping I get to go to it, to be honest with you. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, you better make sure you got your passport updated. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's going to be a new venture for RM Sotheby's. We're very excited about having a presence in Dubai. Very cool. And then in May, May is all about Monaco. May is about Monaco. That's our biannual auction in Monaco. We flip-flop every year between Villa d'Est and Monaco. So last year was Villa d'Est, so this year will be Monaco. Uh, Monaco is one of my favorite auctions. It's, you know, how could it not be? It's Monaco. Uh, it's a beautiful venue right there on Lake Como. It's a if, if you've never been to Monaco and you want to see it along with some cars, definitely check out our auction. That's going to be cool. Again, all these are on the website, RM Sotheby's website, auctions. You can check them all out. I'll put links to that. Another one, kind of a different type venue, Cliveden House, if I'm even saying that right. Cliveden? Yes. Yeah, the Cliveden House. What is that all about? Um, This is a new, also a new venture for us. Uh, We haven't had an auction here. It's in the United Kingdom. Um, We normally do sales in London, but we found this venue. It's a beautiful castle. Um, all the cars we parked out front on the beautiful entry into this historic English setting. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing, really, what we're going to put on there. Um, it's still a few months away. It's not till June, uh, but it's going to be a world-renowned event. Oh, sounds fantastic. And lastly, and excuse uh, me for who, whomever owns this, the Tegern, Tegernacy? I'm saying that. I butchered that terribly. But what is that auction? Is it similar to the Cliveden House auction? Yeah. So in, in Europe, we're we're really trying to, to reach out. This, this is actually in Germany. So it's Got it. taking place with the brand new Concord of Elegance in Germany. So we did a, a small partnership with them uh, to have an auction while their Concord is happening. And this is going to be also a new venture for us in Germany. So in Europe, we like to kind of bounce around because there's so many different wonderful landscapes and settings to host an auction and there's there's car aficionados in every corner wherever you go so you know we we try not to stick to one place for too long we like to keep people on their toes and bring them to new beautiful places yeah yeah together nissy that sound almost almost uh, irish i got that all wrong but it sounds like it's gonna be fun so we'll we'll look forward to all that i'll put links to all these on the show notes page for thatcher and again if you missed my talk with him last year you're gonna learn a lot more about him on that show on the Car Show website, where all my inspiring guests have their own pages. Well, I want to thank you for taking a break out of a uh, a chilly day as you go through your inventory there and spend it with me today. We're going to have fun. In a couple days, I'm going to have your colleague Tess on the show. She's going to talk a lot more about Moda Miami, so we'll learn a lot more about that. Wow. Well, you've got a busy year ahead of you, my friend. Uh, Any parting words of uh, inspiration or wisdom when it comes to the collector car market before I let you go? Oh, Mark, just, you know, you got to keep your, keep an eye on the auctions, pay attention to what's in your garage. And if you want to move something or add something to it, you've got my information. Absolutely. RM Sotheby's, they are the ones to go to. And again, Moda Miami and the RM Sotheby's Miami auction takes place February 29th through March 2nd, with March 1st and 2nd being the auctions at the stunning Biltmore Hotel in Coral, 
Gables, Florida. Doesn't that sound good? I'll put links, but RM Sotheby's easy to find on the website. Check them out. Oh, I want to do a thank you to your colleague, Kate Clendenning. That's another tongue yeah. twister. I've got a lot of tongue twister words today. She is so kind to, to put us back together. So, Kate, thank you very much. Thatcher, thanks for taking a little short break with me. Now it's time to get back to work and get these cars ready for auction. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at Moda Miami in February. Sounds good, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for spending your time with me today. Have you looked under your hood recently? The average car today has more than 70 computers and 100 million lines of code. Today and tomorrow, being a professional technician requires an understanding of technology, computers, and electrical systems that are highly advanced and very complex. Cars yeah is honored to support TechForce Foundation as our charity of choice. Their efforts to help young people pursue a technical education and a fulfilling career as automotive techs is the key to an inspired life. Through scholarships, grants, and good old-fashioned hands-on experiences with vehicles, TechForce and Cars yeah are working together to connect young people with viable careers. Join us and learn more by visiting techforce.org today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.